Hello, friends. If you are here for tonight's Choose Your Library Adventure program, you're in the right place, and we will get started in just a moment here at 6.30. So get settled in, grab a beverage, and we'll be off to the diving into our adventure soon. Oh, maybe everyone can have some nice water to drink. I am feeling very thirsty. This is a very dry place we're in right now. I know it's very it, it's very different from from where you're usually from. Yeah, it's very different. Florida is humid, but it's not quite the same as where you're from. No, but where I'm from, every day is a great hair day. Here on land, it is different. Hmm. hmm. All right, folks, it is 6.30 and we are ready to get started with our program tonight. We are going to be uh, having a little adventure. We're gonna choose our library adventure with our Oceans of Possibilities summer theme. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Lisa, I'm with the Tampa Hillsborough County Public Library and I'm excited to see your, some familiar names here in our attendee list. And this is my good Mer friend, Miss Merlissa. Hi, everybody. I am from the Mer people land. That's why my hair looks this way. And you can't see my fins, but I promise you they're also the same color. It's so nice to meet all of you. I've been learning a lot about libraries. I want to share it with you. All right. So this is a little page showing you one of our Beanstack badges that you can earn. Uh, with a summer reading program, you can win prizes for participating in all kinds of reading activities and logging those hours and books, but you can also win prizes by logging your other activities like participating in some virtual programs. So download that um, Beanstack app, log all of your progress, and win some really fun prizes. Go to hcplc.org summer for all of our summer reading information or hcplc.org uh, or hcplc.beanstack.org for the specific beanstack information. All right, Miss Melissa, I'm going to turn my camera off and let you take us on our adventure. I'll see okay. you soon. Bye bye, Miss Lisa. Thank you so much for giving me this chance. Everyone, I'm very excited. Well, you guys, this is actually my favorite part of my hometown. So this arches the intersection of Atlantica and Seashelly streets. We do have streets underwater and this part has plenty of arches. This keeps the dolphins from going way too fast and speeding. I love my hometown, but obviously, like I said, I can't use any electricity and I can't log my summer reading. But I hope you guys can. And remember, when you log on to Beanstack, you are all here attending this program with me a mer person, so please make sure that you get that activity badge. You'll see there's a lot of badges and a lot of activities that you guys can all do. So everyone, thanks so much for voting, and let's go then and get started. So, you know, we're all readers, I think, and just like me, you probably love the library, and after I leave, how can you guys continue this experience of choosing your adventure and the oceans? Of course, we want you to read some amazing books you can find at our library. So, on your screen, you'll see, you can tell me what sort of book you prefer. If you click on choice A, that means you like fiction and you want some fiction recommendations. And if you choose B, that means you like nonfiction. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys, which do you like more? A, fiction or B, nonfiction? It's kind of close so far. Wow, you guys like fiction. And by the way, I put the merm person there just because, you know, some people do think we're fiction. So let's go ahead and see what my recommendations are for you guys. So fiction for kids. I have two things I'd like to recommend. Choose Your Own Adventure Ghost Island by Shannon Gilligan. You're going to join the local children on the island of Antigua to spy on a ghost after the sun sets on a dare in this multiple plot story. That means you decide how it ends. There are nine possible endings. That one is for kids age six to eight. And the other one, it's for kids who are a little bit older, ages eight to 12. It's called the worst case scenario, Deadly Seas. 
You Decide How to Survive by David Borgenicht. In this role, you're gonna be one of the crew members sailing a yacht around the world. You will encounter dangers and you must make decisions that will ensure the survival of the ship and her crew. And remember guys, it's a little bit scary, but these are definitely books and definitely fiction. So I hope you guys check that out on our website, acplc.org, or you can request that it be sent to your library. All right, just to let you guys know, the nonfiction included pirate queens and the first people who ever dove deep in the sea. So there's plenty, plenty more for you all to read about in the ocean. I'm so jealous humans have libraries. Let's go ahead and start our journey, huh? So you've made some great choices already. And I think you saw some new books probably unless you read all the books we have. So when I was down in the ocean, every mer person had their own favorite type of land habitat. That means like a land environment. Deserts are very popular with mer people. And just because we can't imagine a place where water doesn't exist, isn't that crazy? We don't really have too many books with pictures in them because, you know, that's kind of hard. The books get soggy and wet and they fall apart. It's kind of hard to keep them for a long time. So I always kind of wondered, what do humans say is their favorite ocean habitat? I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the one you guys choose and we can explore how you can access a book about that habitat right away with the snap of your fingers online as an ebook. So get ready to vote, you guys. Would you like to explore a coral reef or would you guys like to explore the deep sea? Let's see what humans think. Oh, wow. I am really, okay, it's getting closer. 75% of you have voted, 88% of you guys have voted. I'll give it two more seconds. Wow, 100% of you guys have voted. I can't believe this. It was so close, but coral reefs and deep sea were a tie. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead then, you guys. I'm gonna click on choice A. Can't believe we had a tie. Choice A, coral reefs though. So for coral reef, I think it's a great choice. I chose it because I'm glad we're not gonna see the spooky underwater. Although the book I'm gonna show you, it also has the deep sea, you guys. I'm gonna show you the table of contents where you can see all of the different pages. Now, most mer people don't really like to go into the deep sea very much because it's cold and there's a lot of pressure from all of the heavy water that's on top of us. So even though we're magical, uh, we don't like to go down there and the coral reefs are very nice and colorful. So we're gonna check on your screen, you see something called World Ebook, and that's gonna be what we look at. There are a lot of other books about coral reefs, but I wanna show you this one because I don't think a lot of people know that they can check out an ebook immediately with no holds from the World Book Encyclopedia Company with their library card. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to change my screen and show you the library website. So here on the library website, uh, there's a lot of different ways to get places, but World Ebooks is a little bit hidden. So you can always, from the main page on hcplc.org, click on resources A through Z, and then you can also click on the W. That will take you to World Ebooks. It'll actually take you to this home page, a super home page with all of the resources. If you have any little brothers and sisters that are in preschool, they can find some great eBooks and some great activities here too. And high school students can also find a lot of great things. eBooks are for all ages though, kids and teenagers. So let's go ahead and take a look here. As you guys can see on your screen, these are my favorite books and I click on them with a star. I love fierce dinosaurs because, you know, as a mer person, I wasn't around when the dinosaurs were here. Um, so I can look at my recently viewed books. I can look at my favorite books and they have a lot of different categories, including animal, amphibians, insects, biographies, there's crafts and activities. I love these books all about chocolate, corn, garlic, potato, rice, yum, cultures of the world, environment. So one that I really wanna show you guys is actually going to be in the nature and science section. 
So we're going to click on the C and it's marbles. Of course, all of these books are really, really wonderful. And there is a book about scary sharks if you are interested in that. So looking at the sea and its wonders, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the coral reef. And right here in this little menu, I can see all the different pages and all the different chapters. If I click on the coral reef, I can definitely make it bigger too so that it's comfortable for everyone to read when you're looking at it. There's also some videos. And there's a lot of really great places. One thing that I learned here is that divers in the Persian Gulf use goggles made of polished clear tortoiseshell shells as early as AD 1300. Can you believe that humans were diving and using tortoise shells as goggles? It is pretty amazing, you guys. There's also all sorts of beautiful, beautiful things. Can you guys imagine what the deep sea page is like? So there's a lot of great things that you guys can do here. I am so jealous of humans. So that is World Sea Book. World eBook, sorry, not World Sea Book. So by the way, you can also find, if you really love coral and pretty things like that, you can also find all sorts of drawing books. Um, I like the series by Ralph Masiello. It takes you step by step in how to make kelp, for example, which is one of my favorite foods. And he also has a farm drawing book, ancient Egypt drawing book, robot drawing book, alien drawing book. And you can get all those at the library too, you guys. You are so lucky. Mer people cannot really draw underwater because, you know, the water kind of washes everything away. So next time you draw, think of the mer people. Hmm. So I want to ask you guys now if you want to explore any other human hobbies with me. Because I feel like it's very fascinating for me to know how you guys all spend your time. So I'm going to launch another poll. I hope you guys can get your voting fingers ready. This drawing stuff really has got me thinking about hobbies. So let's see if you guys have a tie again. Do you want to explore other human hobbies? Choice A is maybe later. First, show me mer people favorite hobbies. And choice B is yes, you want to look at some other human hobbies with me. Wow, unbelievable. I can't believe it. We have a tie. And that's actually perfect because, you guys, there is a hobby that we share. And I'm just going to show you that hobby that we do share. So that's going to be, I don't know if you can believe it, but puzzles and games are a hobby that humans and more people both share. Now, I'm going to show you some electronic puzzles and games because they're fascinating to me, but maybe with a little bit of a twist. I think that'll satisfy our friends who want to look at more people hobbies and our friends who want to look at human hobbies. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm going to show you, I think, um, two things. I'm going to show you a game section and the name that baby animal section. So now I'm going to change the screen from my PowerPoint to your library website. And you can see some puzzles and games that mer people on land can enjoy, but also humans on land can enjoy. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm going to go ahead and show you something from the same screen, the world book. But I'm going to show you how to get there a different way. So if you go to hcplc.org and you click on services and kids, you can see a lot of the things that I'm showing you. Like I said, World eBooks is kind of a hidden thing. And maybe we'll explore some of these other ones later today. But I guarantee you everything here is really great and fun. Kids of all ages. So down at the bottom, I know it says homework help, but there's plenty of games here. Don't tell your parents. World Book Kids by World Book Encyclopedia, one of the oldest encyclopedias that is available, has a world of facts to explore. But what you don't know when you click on it is that you can actually play games and puzzles. So let me show you a little bit. There's a lot of other things that we won't be able to explore. We won't have time. But you guys can also do science projects. 
um, and you guys can also do some activities here. There's pictures, world of animals, it's fascinating, but I'm interested in the hobby section, just things that are a little bit for fun. So if I click on games, I'll see there's puzzles, more people's favorites, multiple choice, matching, sorting, and there's crosswords. And I can kind of search it by game type. So I see multiple choice has a creature challenge, has matching, name that baby animal, I'll show you a little bit of that later. But I can also search by subject. So if I click here on the screen to subject, I can see there's a subject of animals, language arts, math, science, and tons more. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on animals and show you a little bit of the matching program for baby animals. Name that baby animal. So here I would kind of match um, a kitten's adult form is a house cat. A cub's adult form is, I'm not from the earth, so I don't know a lot of these things. I mean, I'm from the ocean and stuff. Um, a chick is a chicken or a robin. A bear or tiger baby is called a cub. And I guess a dog, a squirrel, a seal, or a rat is called a pup. I guess. I don't really know. I, we don't have dogs underwater. Oh, okay, we do have seals, so that was easier. Whew. So that's a little bit of name that baby animal, but I also want to show you um, a little bit of the puzzle, which is definitely a favorite. And since we already explored the ocean a little bit, I thought it would be fun to show you if I can. Um, there is an anemone that I wanna show you here. But maybe I'll show you the busy bees instead. So when you click on a puzzle, you can click on I'm ready to play. It has a timer so you can um, kind of challenge yourself and your siblings and you can start to put it together. And if you have trouble, you can always ask for a hint and it'll show you the image. So that's a little bit of the puzzle. It's pretty amazing. Really love that you guys have the electricity to do this because like I said, our puzzles are very different. Maybe I'll tell you about it next time, but it involves a lot of seashells that we have to smash into pieces. So I didn't get to show you all of the puzzle, but when you finish, it tells you how much your time was so you can challenge yourself. And this animal that appears on the screen, I don't know what it is, but it is really cute. And it has a little metal around its neck. Um, and the metal's made out of, I think that's gold. So definitely check that out. I hope you guys enjoy puzzles as much as more people do. It seems like it's a lot easier for you to start it though. You just have to click some buttons instead of smashing some seashells. So let's continue this journey. Man, I wish I could live on land. So I want to ask you, you know, you've heard a little bit about what it's like in the ocean. And of course, you know what it's like to live as humans on land, I think. I don't think there's any other mermaids who are here right now. So tell me where you guys like to be the most. I hope we don't have another tie, but maybe we will. Where do you like to be? On land is choice A. And under the sea is choice B. Under the sea. Okay. Over 60% of you voted you want to be under the sea. All right. So I'm going to click here and let's see where it takes us. Under the sea, under the sea. You guys know that movie? I heard about it and then I watched it a few days ago. It was very good. All right, so I like to be under the sea too, but of course you may have noticed I'm a little upset about the things that I can't do underwater. However, I have to say, all of the library workers have been so nice to me and they let me use everything I want at the library. So I started to explore a lot. They say they're all about giving everyone equal treatment, even half fish like me. So that's why I was a little bit upset to see we have one service. It's labeled for humans only. It says, if you see on your screen, askalibrarian.org is the human search engine. But I found something out. Let's take a look. I'm gonna tell you about this Ask a Librarian. And you can find it at the bottom of our website, hcplc.org. 
if you scroll down to the very bottom, you can just click where it says ask a librarian. You can do it as a text message, as a chat, or as an email. They're so nice and they'll definitely get back to you. Um, of course, you can ask the library in person when you go, but I was, like I said, very sad about the human search engine. So I decided to ask the librarian and I just did the chat form. So I put in my name, Marissa, and I asked, hello librarians, can more people chat with a librarian on this website? Thank you. And what do you guys think they said? She said, sure, do you have a question I can help you with? Well, that was my question that time, although I did talk to Kelly a lot. Kelly N was amazing. She even gave me the typical goodbye for mermaids, which is happy waves. So that is Ask a Librarian. And remember, if you just go to our main website, you can go down to the bottom and you can chat with them. They're so nice. And even if you are a mer person, they will answer your questions. So, well, I talked to Kelly a lot and it actually made me wanna be a librarian. She said, part of being a librarian is making sure you know what everybody wants and likes, and that way you can give them the best advice. I'm gonna to try to study and start a library underwater in my hometown. It's gonna look a little different. We can't have, you know, virtual events and everything, and we can't have computers, but it might be good practice um, here with you guys. So thank you so much for letting me practice. And I wanna get your interest now. Um, I talked to Kelly a lot about human children and I wonder if you're the same way as the human children she was telling me about. So um, go ahead and tell me, you guys, what interests you more? Are you guys more interested in um, how to find the most award-winning books for kids or are you interested in finding great kids movies for free? I wonder what you're interested in. And right now you're tied. Wow, humans are all so different. 75% of you have voted. Ooh, so you guys voted that you want to know how to watch great movies for free. 75% of you guys have voted for that choice B. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Melissa librarian skills and we're gonna see how to do it. So there is something called Canopy Kids. You can put it on your phone, you can put it on your Roku, you can put it on your desktop, you can put it on your laptop, and you can watch unlimited kids movie from the Canopy service that the library has for free. I do have two recommendations. Frog Dreaming, The Quest. It's from the 1980s and it's from Australia. And it's about a kid who goes searching for legendary frogs. And there's another suggestion that I have, which is Tales of the Night. That is an award-winning French movie. I'm gonna show you this Canopy Kids because there's no limit to how many you can watch and there's a lot of good stuff. So we are running out of time, but I do wanna show you this and practice my librarian skills. So Canopy, and you probably saw it before on hcplc.org. You can reach it by going to learning and research or you can click on kids and then you can go to Canopy Kids. Enjoy unlimited streaming of educational and enriching movies, TV series, and animated storybooks for children of all ages. So this is Canopy. I'm in adult mode right now, but if I wanted to go to kid mode, there's a pin number that I enter to go away from the kid mode. And so honestly, you guys, it's really, really simple and it's really, really easy to set up a device. Like if your parents set up Canopy, they would just set up a pin number and then that would limit it to Canopy Kids. So that is kind of how you watch Canopy Kids. There's also lessons in language learning. And for younger kids, there are many classic storybooks, including some that are read by actors and celebrities and really big names. You guys are very lucky because the adults can only watch 10 movies per month, but the kids on Canopy Kids, now they can watch as many as they want. Just another way that your library is so, so amazing. Well, I'm going to turn my camera on again and I'm going to ask you guys one last question that I'm very, very curious about. Hi, by the way. So let's see what you guys think.
about your tour? How do you feel about our tour? Did you learn something? Did you not learn anything? You loved it and you already knew everything or you did learn at least one new thing? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I really can't wait till I'm a librarian. 100% of you guys were shown something new. That is so, so wonderful. Miss Lisa, please tell the library bosses that I want to be a librarian. Well, I think with a result like this, that they almost have to hire you for the job, maybe we can open up a new underwater branch. Ooh, I would love that, maybe in the Hillsborough River. Ooh, right there, because that way you could be by the, by the river and the ocean at the same time. Oh, yeah. You could visit your friends on land and in the sea. Oh, my friends on land would understand, lovely. I think that's a good idea. Wonderful. Well, don't forget, uh, we talked about Beanstack earlier. There are so many prizes that can be earned through this. So some of them are books, some of them are technology. There's so much uh, possible out there. We have that ocean of possibilities and that goes for the prizes too. So make sure you log all those hours and activities and, and keep track of those. And hey, there's also always a chance to let us know what you thought. So you'll definitely get a survey after the program too that you can fill out. So fill that survey out, let, let us know what you liked, maybe what, what topic you might like to see covered next time we have an adventure. And maybe we'll meet a new uh, Merlissa friend that, that might guide us through that next adventure. So yeah, so. we can't wait to hear back from you. If you have any questions about this program, about any of our summer programs, just go to hcplc.org slash contact or give us a call at 813-273-3652. And like Ms. Merlisa said, that Ask a Librarian feature is on that page too. If you go to hcplc.org slash contact, it's got a button right there where you can chat with a real local librarian. And keep an eye out on the schedule, hcplc.org slash events has all of our upcoming programs and summer programs, and we're looking forward to seeing you back for those. Oh, so great. We are so looking forward to seeing you back. Maybe I'll see you guys sometime in a library underwater or maybe on land. Thank you everyone so much. Bye friends. Bye everybody. Bye.